Hello and thank you for joining us today as we talk about a topic that is on everyone's minds, vaccines for COVID-19. At the end of last year, we all received some welcome news. WHO has given emergency use authorization to the Pfizer and AstraZeneca COVID vaccines. WHO has also provided recommendations on how to use the Moderna vaccine. Other new vaccines are in the pipeline for which WHO is expected to give emergency use authorization. This is a welcome sign, but also raises many more questions, including how safe the vaccine is, who would be first to receive it, and how people living in certain countries would be able to access it. With me today is Dr. Ivan Houghton, Director of Communicable Diseases for WHO's ESSA Mediterranean region who will be answering these questions and more. Welcome, Dr. Houghton. Hello. Let me start with a question that many people are asking. There are several different kinds of vaccines that are now being used by countries for their populations. In general, what are the differences between these vaccines? The vaccines for COVID-19 differ in the way that they're made. All of these vaccines do protect against COVID-19, but they work differently. Some use a whole kill virus, some just some parts of the virus, some use other harmless uh, viruses as transport, a bit like a Trojan horse, and some are pieces of genetic material that gives instructions to make pieces of the virus which will trigger immunity. Vaccines also differ in how they are stored. Some of them need to be stored at very, very cold temperature. These kind of temperature cannot be organized everywhere, so that has consequences in terms of where we can use them and where we cannot. Some vaccines are given with two doses and some other with one dose. Dr. Houghton, what does it mean that when we say that a vaccine has been given emergency use authorization by WHO? So vaccines that are authorized for emergency use by WHO will go through an extensive review. This provides a stamp of quality, safety and efficacy, and manufacturing quality. To do that, we work very closely with the European Medicine Agency and other national regulatory authorities. All vaccine producers or manufacturers are expected to submit or share their clinical data with WHO experts and other national regulatory authorities for review and recommendation. Another question says, the speed of vaccine development has been extraordinary. How can we ensure that given such a short time frame for development, the vaccines are not just effective, but also safe? You're absolutely right. It's been truly extraordinary. And we're also benefiting from the experience that we acquired with other diseases, such as Ebola. This made it possible to develop these vaccines and fully evaluate them in clinical trials much faster than before. So why is that? Essentially for one reason. We were conducting these trials in the middle of a big pandemic with many people infected. So this gave us a lot of opportunities to see if the vaccine work or not, and the opportunity to conduct that assessment faster. Another important reason is the investment made by the governments and the private sector to develop and produce these vaccines. What people are worried about are the side effects. Was there enough follow-up on the vaccines? Yes, absolutely. Side effects from vaccine happen in the very first week after the vaccination, not many months after. So for all these trials, the follow-up included the weeks during which the side effect could have occurred. Long-term follow-up for the vaccinated people is also important, and the local health authorities, in collaboration with WHO and other partners, are committed to document any potential side effect and the duration of immunity against the virus. I have a question that concerns many people. Many countries are vaccinating the populations with vaccines other than the ones authorized by WHO. What does that mean? Well, each country can choose vaccine for its own population. And they can do this on the basis of the information that they have. We do not believe that this is a source of concern. 
if a country makes a decision to introduce a vaccine, it means they've done so on the basis of a dossier that they've reviewed. In the case of WHO, we take more time because we have to take the responsibility to do this not only for one country, but for many countries. So the level of scrutiny and documentation has to be at the highest level. As vaccines start rolling out, many people have concerns regarding how exactly do vaccines work. Can you walk us through the process? A vaccine helps a person build up immunity against a germ to protect someone against an infectious disease. It works by injecting something that looks very much like a germ that stimulates the immune system to produce an immune response. This is what protects the person from a future infection if we ever come across with a real infection. That is the way that it works for most diseases and that is the way it works for COVID-19. But when we get vaccinated, we are not just protecting ourselves but also those around us. Every person vaccinated is one person that the virus cannot use to spread within the population. Dr. Ivan, do I need the vaccine if I have already had COVID-19? The first question should be, did you have COVID-19 for sure? If the disease was not confirmed by a test, it's hard to say. For persons who have had COVID-19 for sure, there are no reason to exclude them from vaccination. In fact, WHO recommends that even people already infected with COVID-19 can get the vaccine with no side effect, no problem. However, because of the short supplies of vaccine, it makes sense to prioritize people who did not have COVID-19 before. COVID-19 does give immunity for a few months. We have all heard about new strains of COVID-19 in several countries around the world. Will the vaccines currently approved by WHO or NRAs protect us even from these new variants? The new variants are indeed a challenge and the mutation of the virus was expected considering the vast spread of this virus around the world. However, we can work on solutions. The first news that we received on the efficacy of the vaccine against most variants is mostly reassuring. But this can evolve, and we are keeping our eyes open. Faced with variants, we will do three things. First, we will conduct studies to understand how vaccines work against variants. They will tell us if more action is needed. Second, we can work on giving people more vaccine doses like boosters. Third, we could also work on adjusting some of these vaccine preparation, just like for the flu every year, and this can all be done. Dr. Ivan, many people in our region live in countries that are low or middle income countries, or are affected by political conflict and other emergencies. What is WHO doing to ensure that COVID-19 vaccines will be allocated fairly to all people, even those who may not be able to afford it or are hard to reach? WHO joined forces with other partners to put together the COVAX facility. COVAX is working to accelerate the development and the manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccines. COVAX will also work to ensure that there is a fair and equitable access to these vaccines across the world. The COVAX facility will give countries that could not afford them otherwise access to the world's largest and most diverse portfolio of vaccine candidates. For populations living in areas affected by conflicts or emergencies, for refugees, for migrants, we need to make sure that the vaccination plans include everyone. We need to make sure that these plans are effectively put in place. And if they are not, we need to have alternate solutions to make sure that no one is left behind. In the context of such pandemic as COVID-19, does WHO recommend mandatory vaccination for COVID-19? WHO provides guidance and recommendation on whom to vaccinate or to prioritize, and it is up to country to decide if vaccination is mandatory or not. However, generally speaking, WHO prefers to convince people 
that they need vaccine rather than forcing them. Dr. Ivan, as the vaccines start being used, how fast will we be able to resume our normal lives? The vaccine are a new tool that we now have to make an impact on the pandemic. However, they will not solve everything immediately or put an end to the pandemic. As the pandemic continues, we still need to take all the necessary measures to prevent the virus from spreading and causing more death. We need to follow through and to adopt a do-it-all approach. We need to continue to practice physical distancing, staying home if needed, and following all the prevention measures that we know have been proven to work and keep us safe. At the same time, we need to advocate and increase the number of people receiving the vaccine to increase coverage. Thank you, Dr. Ivan. Thank you all for watching us today. Till next time, stay safe.